All right, well, let's go with this. So blockchains are going to change the world. They're going to have an impact um, of insinuating themselves into our society just like the Internet has. And just like the Internet disrupted media by digitizing information, blockchains are going to disrupt a whole group of sectors, banking, government, uh, industrial sector trading, by digitizing business processes. And it's going to do that if we can do one thing, if we can solve scalability. Because, take for an example, New York Stock Exchange trades about a billion shares a day. That works out to about 10,000 transactions a second. On the other hand, Bitcoin, its throughput is two transactions a second. And for it to handle just the New York Stock Exchange, it would have to scale up 5,000 times to make 10,000 transactions a second. And one of the biggest problems with the Bitcoin blockchain in addition to privacy, is scalability. But if we can solve this, if we can make the Bitcoin blockchain or another blockchain with the same characteristics scale, then we can have all these types of enterprise use cases possible. So we're talking about putting land titles on blockchains. We're talking about putting intellectual property and copyrights. We're talking about manufacturing and uh, supply chains. We're talking about trades identity, um, shipping, as well as payments, all going onto the blockchain. Right now, the Bitcoin blockchain has two transactions a second. We're not talking that it needs to scale 10, 100 times, 1,000 times, or even 100,000 times. It needs to scale a million times. And what we saw, we started out as a scribe, putting intellectual property on the blockchain. And in our very first project, in February 2015, we were working with the Berlin Art Prize to put authorship claims onto the blockchain. And we were getting confirmations that took 24 hours, a lot of time. And if you think about this, if you're dealing with high frequency trading, you're dealing with milliseconds or microseconds, and we're getting 24 hour confirmation times on Bitcoin blockchain because it wasn't scaling. Then we started working with a photo marketplace who had 100,000 photos a day that we could put authorship claims on. And we projected forward and said, this isn't going to work. There's no way we're ever going to be able to achieve the vision of blockchain if we weren't able to scale it. And nobody else was doing it. So we decided to build it ourselves. Um, and what do, I, what do we mean by scalability? What are the challenges with Bitcoin and the blockchain? Well, number one, scalability means a whole bunch of kind of characteristics. Number one is throughput, two transactions a second. You have latency. How long does it take to process a transaction? In Bitcoin blockchain, it's 10 to 1,000 minutes. Capacity is 50 gigabytes, which is nowadays the memory stick. Um, scalability, in that the performance decreases as you add computers onto the network. And you actually can't really find data onto the Bitcoin blockchain that easily. So we brought out BigchainDB. It's the world's first scalable blockchain database, and it's a database that has blockchain characteristics for the world. And why is it special? Well, first of all, the throughput is a million transactions a second. Our latency is less than a second. The capacity is in the petabytes, which is a lot. And we actually get better as you add computers onto the network, and you can find the data once you put it in there. It's essentially um, a database, a distributed database with blockchain characteristics. And there is no other blockchain database in the world. But what it allows is for enterprises to move from a prototype to production knowing that scalability is solved. It allows developers to build applications on top of blockchain technologies, knowing that um, they can handle millions of messages or transactions a second. And it allows for this kind of permissionless innovation that needs to happen for, for the blockchain kind of technology to take root. And just to get, kind of give you an idea of what, what we did, we took the best of the Bitcoin blockchain, which is immutability. That means once you write something to the ledger, it can't go away. We took uh, no central authority, and then we took assets over the network from the Bitcoin blockchain. And then we added to that the qu qualities of distributed computing and distributed databases, and we put that together into BigchainDB. And since we released, we've had over 250 inquiries from enterprise consultants 
other blockchain companies across the entire board. People are interested in this because if you've been working in blockchain technology, you know that scalability is a problem. And we've signed deals with about 29 of them, and we're signing more every week. And why is this kind of special? Well, the big chain DB fits within this concept of an emerging decentralized stack. The internet was the first one, which is decentralized communication. And now, within the elements of computing for decentralized uh, process or decentralized world, you have other components that are being developed. You have things like Bitcoin, you have file systems, and now you have big chain DB. You also have Ethereum for smart contracts. And on top of that, you're able to build platforms and applications on top. Everledger, Tally Sticks, a whole bunch of other stuff that is going to be able to be powered by blockchain technologies. And the way that we're going to approach this, because the, it's very early in the days, right? We have a four-pillar adoption plan. Number one, we're going to release a public big chain for the world. Um, this allows for developers to have a database that is essentially like internet for information, except for databases um, for the world. We have an outreach program for developers and executives and consultants. And we have channel partners. That's essentially anybody working in the blockchain space. Blockchain companies, consortium, cloud providers, consultants, database companies, they're all looking to get a foothold into the blockchain world. And finally, we're working with specific enterprises um, who are further along in the path of experimenting with blockchain technologies. So our goal is to be essentially one of the linchpins of the blockchain revolution. We're trying to be the de facto database, and that's our goal. So if you want to learn more, go to bigchaindb.com or bigchaindb on Twitter. Um, today, the London uh, School of Economics Business Review released an article that I had written, and you can find it there or on my Twitter feed. Thank you. Thank you. I got a million questions that I want to ask you, being the technology nerd that I am, but I'm going to leave this to the judges. If you have any questions. Thanks for that. Um, I had a question firstly on, uh, I guess, the user adoption and the sales strategy from that perspective. Um, you know, your clients that have these relationships, the SAPs, Oracles of the world, um, you know, are selling databases to these clients. Now, how do you work with them or through them or do you compete directly against them? And then how do you drive the more public adoption of the big chain DB? Yeah, so right now, the many of the big players are, are not really getting it yet. Um, that's one thing. Second thing is, is that for the demand side, most of it's been organic. So in other words, anybody, there's right now about 2,000 experiments going on in the, in the world on blockchain technologies. And anybody who gets close enough to needing scale needs to come through us. There is no way around. There is no other technology that allows for such scalability and throughput. So we actually have a unique perspective on the ecosystem and seeing any, any use case that's getting closer to production, they call us. Pascal? Um, given that uh, most of the tech stacks in the, uh, uh, in the space, um, the various forks of uh, Ethereum, uh, Ripple, of course the Bitcoin blockchain, are still somewhat immature, i.e. it's early innings in terms of how they are going to morph and complexify or split. How do you think about the interoperability, what I would call forward interoperability in, in building your technology and making sure you don't go into dead ends and, and, you know, still grow with the tech stacks that are going to grow up, uh, with you? So the, the two main kind of groups that we need to work with are, like, the, the Ethereum-style spinoffs and the platforms, right? We're working very closely with all of them. So we're working with about 10 different Ethereum companies as well as most of the platform plays, as well as the consortiums. So we're in the discussion because they are coming to us saying, uh, we need a scalable blockchain-style database. So we're working with on, them on that and defining the standard as we go along. And that's how we—that's part of the takedown strategy, to be integrated into the, the, the movement because it's going to go slow, 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 and it's going to go very quickly. And when that happens, when that inflection point comes, we aim to be the linchpin there. Yeah, thanks for your presentation. So there are a zillion use cases, you know, if you have brainstorm, we have another uh, 100. But what are the specific use cases you are going after? Because I, I do understand what you, you deliver, but what are the specific use cases? You know, it's, it's, that question is akin to 30 years ago, 
having a conference like this and somebody saying, you know, there's this thing called TCP IP and we put this thing like HTML and HTTP together. It's called, we call it the internet. What's the use case? <coughs> it's a tough question to answer, answer because this is as revolutionary as the internet. And, you know, I gave a little bit of hint of this, but the internet was only the first phase of this decentralization wave. Blockchain technologies moves us into decentralized processing and decentralized storage. And that in itself, we're looking at another 30 to 40 year wave of working this general purpose technology into our society. It will affect every industry out there, just like the media industry got destroyed in a certain sense by the internet for information technologies. It's the best I can answer. Um, just to build on that question, original use case, or the, the way I remember this um, ascribe is this intellectual property rights um, um, value proposition. Is that gone now, or is that in the background still there, and you're just building the technology first to do to enable this then? Or Yeah, Big Chain DB is the core purpose of our business now. We pivoted away, but ascribe actually, ascribe is an interesting story, because we thought you have 180 countries and you have 180 different laws to protect copyright. So if I'm an author in Germany and I publish a book in English, do I just publish in Germany or do I have to publish it across the world? And we said, well, blockchain actually is a good technology for this because you can just publish it once on the blockchain. Everybody knows this. Same with births, deaths, all these kind of things. Ascribe still is there because it informs how we built BigChainDB. A lot of the requirements for BigChainDB came from, as I said, intellectual property. The beauty of this is, though, the same requirements we had for intellectual property are the same requirements that banks have, same requirements that payment providers have, and manufacturers, supply chains have. It's something that we discovered after the fact. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you.